I'm Catherine Linden. And I'm Riley Woodruff filling in for Emma Kafton. And welcome to the first episode of Political Pupils. This podcast is brought to you by Mr. Kohler's first period government class. We will be presenting five segments, all made by my classmates. Today is May 7th, and our first segment is Today in History by Julia Leffler. Thank you, Catherine and Riley, and welcome to this day in history. I'm Julia Leffler, and my co-host, Alexis Samsag, couldn't make it today. Today is May 7th, and on this day in 1915, the British liner ship Lusitania was sunk by German warfare, killing over a thousand people. The sinking of the Lusitania was a catalyst for what would become World War I. It turned many people in the United States against Germany, and was one of the many reasons the U.S. entered the war. Another famous event that had occurred on May 7th was the 1945 surrender of Germany. Germany unconditionally pulled back all their forces throughout France on this day and announced their surrender to the Allied forces. This official surrender of Germany led to the end of World War II and the six-year war that had ravaged many countries across the globe. Some historical figures also celebrate their birthdays on May 7th. These people include Robert Browning, one of the most famous poets to date, Joseph Cannon, a former member of the House of Representatives, and Eva Perón, a former First Lady of Argentina. That concludes our segment of Today in History. Back to you, Catherine and Riley. Thank you, Julia. Now we're going to go to trivia with Jenna and Joe. Thanks, Catherine and Riley. I'm Jenna. And I'm Joseph. And who's ready to play History Trivia of the Day? First question. Who was the first president to declare war? A. George Washington, B. James Madison, C. Woodrow Wilson, or D. FDR? That's a tough one. Question number two. What was the last state to be admitted into the Union? A. Wyoming, B. Alaska, C. Utah, or D. Hawaii? Wow, I don't know if I know that one. Last question. Which state's electoral votes ultimately decided the 2000 presidential election? A. California, B. Florida, C. Ohio, or D. Massachusetts? I wasn't born for that, but I heard that one was a doozy. Uh, got your answers? Well, stay tuned to find out if you're correct. Back to you, Catherine and Riley. Wow, those are some tough questions. They are. On to our next segment, Current Events with Riley and Jackson. Wow, thanks, Catherine and Riley. By the way, I'm Riley. And I'm Jackson. And in today's Current Events, Derek Chauvin's lawyers fired, filed for a new trial based on possible bias of the jury. The basis for this motion is founded on the fact that the jury, which convicted Derek Chauvin, might have been biased. Chauvin was convicted of second-degree murder, third-degree murder, and second-degree manslaughter for the death of George Floyd. During the trial on April 18th, Maxine Waters made remarks at a BLM protest to get more confrontational if former police officer Derek Chauvin did not get convicted of murdering George Floyd. President Biden also weighed in on the trial, saying, and I quote, I'm praying the verdict is the right verdict, which is, I think it's overwhelming in my view. The judge in the Chauvin-Floyd case, Peter Cahill, noted that Nelson may have a strong case for a mistrial because of the influence and interference of these higher-up political figures. Hot on the heels of this controversy, a juror from the trial was seen wearing a Black Lives Matter shirt with a picture of George Floyd a year before, heavily suggesting that the jury was biased from the start. In worldwide news, Germany is considering new plans to give extra rights and freedoms to those who are fully vaccinated. If fully vaccinated, the regulations would be much more lax. Those who live in Germany would no longer be required to go into quarantine after traveling abroad and would have very few regional restrictions. Vaccinated people would be allowed to meet in private without restrictions, according to plan. And if voted for, then Germany's, uh, Germany's plan could go into effect as early as Saturday. However, mask wearing and social distancing in public spaces will remain in place. That's all the headlines we have for now. Back to you guys. Thanks for the news. Now we're on to Amendment of the Week with Andrew and Ben. Hello, I'm Ben Bruni. And I'm Andrew Fulham. And today we're here with Amendment of the Week. This week's amendment is the 13th Amendment, which states, Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime, or if the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. In short, this amendment abolished slavery in the United States and any idea of it in the future. It was passed on January 31st of 1865, but didn't really go into effect until June 19th of that year, when a Union general rode into Galveston, Texas, and informed the slaves that they are free. This day is celebrated around the nation as Juneteenth. That's interesting, Andrew. And a lot of some things that a lot of people don't know about the Thirteenth Amendment is things that of factors that led up to it. The Thirteenth Amendment was signed shortly after the Civil War, 
during the period of Reconstruction in the South, a time where there was no representation in government from the southern states. So therefore, the 13th Amendment was pretty much able to pass unanimously without any hiccups. Yeah, who knows how long it would have taken to free the slaves if the southern states were part of it. I mean, it's we're really lucky that they didn't. Yep. That was our uh, amendment of the week. Now let's hear from Catherine and Riley for our next topic. Wow, that's actually one of my favorite amendments. Now on to local legends with Britton and Casey. Thank you, Riley and Catherine. My name's Casey. And I'm Britton. And this is Local Legends. In this segment, we will be talking about people from Sandusky and how they impact Sandusky's history. Today's historical figure is Jay Cook. Jay Cook was born in 1821 right here in Sandusky. He was a huge part in the financing of the Union effort in the Civil War. He collected a grand total of $830 million from loans which he used to pay the Union soldiers during the end of the war. After the war, he helped to build railroads all across the northwestern United States, which his firm, of course, financed. However, the firm faced some bankruptcy, and the project was halted. Jay is recognized as the first investment banker in the United States and creator of the first wirehouse firm. While he went through some struggles with this, including bankruptcy, this is still a grand achievement. Overall, Jay Cook was an important figure in both Sandusky and the United States history, and the man did not die poor. That's all we have for you today. Back to Riley and Catherine. Thanks, Britton and Casey. First, we're going to start with our trivia answers. Question one, the answer was B, James Madison. Question two, the answer was D, Hawaii. And question three, the answer was B, Florida. Thank you for watching. That concludes our first show. We'll be back next week.